out on Black Sands. It's called Kiara. So yeah, I started with the uh, started with the drums here. 909 kick, which is I don't usually use too many kind of synthetic drums, but for this one I wanted to just build a beat out of um, old drum machine sounds. I've got files of, of like old Lin drums, 909s, uh, Doctor rhythms. So this was uh, a beat made out of old old drum machine sounds. So uh, yeah, 909 kick. I wanted to get a bit of a well, basically I wanted to get a bit of a swing on it, and I did that manually rather than using any sort of MIDI templates. Um, actually, I just play the whole beat as as it stands. So that's basically the. Straight 909 kick. There's nothing else on there. Like, there's a little bit of this, um, just to give it a little bit of drive using this PSP uh, vintage warmer, which I use on loads of stuff. Just to literally just to warm things up, give it a little bit of natural sounding distortion. I mean, it doesn't sound hugely different, but it just kind of brings out the brings out the sort of 71 low ends, just to kind of make it a bit more ballsy. Uh, next thing was layering up snares. There's not really many snares. There's like this this um, Dr. Ribbon like clap, which I've driven quite a lot. Put a little bit of uh, reverb on as well. So that's it, just straight. Not that exciting. Um, Really like cranked up the like overdrive, overdriven like the top ends. Put some reverb on there, and then just brought out the, the uh, upper mid, you know, just a bit of 5k here, just to make it kind of have a lot of presence. Um, and then what I've done is layered that with just a couple of hand claps. There's one sort of pan to the right. One pan to the left. Same again, just overdrove them a little bit. The two hand claps and the snare all slightly off axis, so they get that kind of overlapping kind of that kind of thing. With the kick there. That's just some, some extra percussion I just threw in from, from contact here. Um, not really that exciting, it just kind of adds a bit more texture to the <clears throat> a bit more texture to the drums wherever they are. Yeah, a few little bits of percussion just, sort of, just to pepper it up a little bit. And then I took the, the um, oh there's another rim shot here as well. Like layering up, so it's like, yeah, big hand clap, rim shot, two other things, um, some hi hats, which are really sort of disjointed. Like they sound a bit weird on their own, but when you put them in the context of the of the kicks, like they're purposely a little bit pulled about, so they sound, sound a little bit kind of. And there's a shaker, which is just like that. Down the microphone. But what I've done with this, I've got a, um, I've side chained a lot of this stuff. I've put the kick out onto the bus, um, bus channel, and then brought the, brought the side chain in here. On all the all the well, on the shaker, and a lot of other stuff in the track as well. So I just side chained it through that through that bus. So just on its own, it's kind of straight. When you bring the kick in, it's so the, the shaker is just sort of filling the space where the kick where the kick is. 
another thing I did was to uh, bounce all the snares together and really compress them um, just on their own. So you really can't hear it. It's literally just the sort of tail end of the compression and then just mix that in to the top of it just to give it that extra, that extra so that's the drums um, the next thing was to find just to kind of throw a load of sounds at it and the thing that that I found worked was this heavily edited distorted I mean I don't even remember where it's from I'll try and find the, the original source on its own uh, it was just this kind of could have been for, uh, it was off some record or other. It was like um, I think it was like a sort of old sort of free jazz percussion record. But let me find the sound and then I'll show you what I did with it. So yeah, that was the that was the sample, which I think is a sort of like kind of proggy synth record from somewhere or other that I bought for a dollar in the bargain bin. So the, thing to, the next thing to, I, I did with that was just to... What I, yeah, what I did, which is kind of what I always do, is just get, the, get a section of the drums. So I just got the beat and then just started playing around with that sound. So I just took that sample and just literally like laid it over the beat. That sounds kind of abstract. But... So this case of just going through finding bits of rhythm, just finding sort of just doing rhythmical edits of this of this kind of fairly abstract noise. So maybe like I just kind of chop it on the one here. Just play, just play around with it until you make enough chops and edits that it, that, that it fits. So I might just look for where the where the points are in the waveform, it literally just drags stuff till it looks like it's going to fit and eventually something will start taking shape where it becomes sort of more rhythmical. Um. So it's just kind of tailing the last part of the beat. So I might want to just tighten up that. It doesn't matter where it's from, it's just literally looking at the wave file and going, well, that looks like it's going to fit somehow. And just keep going like that until you've got something that's sort of, sort of nice and rhythmical and fits with the drums. Um, so I'll do it again there. That sounds a bit fast, so just keep going and editing until see that looks like it's going to fit. So you've got the drums now. Something fairly rhythmical. And then it's just bringing out the bringing out the the harmonies, just trying to listen out for the just throwing some notes against it and see what fits. But processing this a little bit further, bringing the side chain back in on it. 
So it's, it fits even more with the with the drums now. So now it's really kind of sitting sitting in with the beat. So what I'll do now is just pull up a um, just some sort of a a bass set. I'll work on this later, but just for the purposes of trying to find some something to harmonise it and just listening to the sound and trying to fit some kind of harmony around it really, just to kind of get see how see what works, just kind of throwing some notes against it and seeing how that comes out. some kind of context. Um, so I'll just record a bit of that in. Something like that for example. of it you've got these are the drums the main sample and some kind of harmony to work off so then it's just a case of bringing in just throwing other sounds against it trying stuff sampling things processing it um, another thing I've done at this point is brought in some extra harmonies on the filler harmonic this is like a string emulator um, so I just loaded up a viola on here. Um, so you can just bring out even more harmony in. So yeah, just trying to find some chords around here now. thing I did on this was use this this kind of 8-bit wobbly noise over here. So, 
That actually came from uh, an app on the iPhone, that sound. There's this thing called 8-bit, 8-bit tone. Um, which is just like an 8-bit synth on the phone, and I just used it to to um, to make those sounds. So yeah, that's the, the kind of... It's not the really line I ended up using, what I ended up using was more of a... Once I chopped up this main sample here, which is the main sort of atmospheric part of the tune, and then I, I sample, I bounce this down, I put it on another tune, uh, put it on another track here. So just and it's quiet, but then what I did is really. Rather than putting loads of effects on the first one, I put loads of effects on kept that as the main part and put loads of, of processing on the, on this second part here. So I put it through a guitar amp simulator amplitude. Which really drives it and makes it that guy there. Then put it through the same sidechain routing as everything else knocks off the low end and then put a bit of stereo spread on it and then layered that with the original so it just gives it a lot more depth rather than processing this one just having that one sort of like sprinkled over the top of it gives it a bit more I mean, that's it just on its own with this second layer That's the that was the basic start of it. So you've got all those elements. The drums and the sample. A little little sprinkling of roads there. Which is just this. Overdriven a little bit. Just kind of thrown in over the top to give it a bit of it's really something. 
Um, so the bass, after I'd written and decided what the, what the harmonies were going to be, I actually recorded the bass on this guy, on the um, Elisa's Micron. And there's two layers, there's just a, a really basic sub bass. A little bit of a, a little tweak on the, uh, on the FM at the end there. The other thing was to use a different patch to make the, uh, a, a, a double, to double it up on the top end. So this is more of a... Um, it's the same line, but just on a different patch. So it's kind of supplying the, the sort of like the fuzzier top end when you put them together. That kind of really creates the... It kind of sound like one big noise, but it's kind of two things happening at once. that I've sampled in off records and tuned around a little bit, this little voice sample there, there's a heart somewhere else that I can't find but apparently it's on here. Yeah, that's, that's a recording of an auto harp which is this thing here, which I'll show you. This thing here, which I've used a few bits of stuff. pitching up in the sample, but that's where that sound came from. So it's just messing around, throwing in little bits of sounds that seem to work. stop on the turntable to get that you know I've thrown in again some more kind of ambient noises which is just I mean the stuff I'm sampling these days is more abstract sound and the natural hooks and loops, and so we're finding all this weird stuff like um, this thing, which is a recording of a, an installation wind harp from the 60s, which is like built on a hill, and it's just this thing that drones around in the wind. So that's what that noise is, which is a noise that starts the whole track. This weird little wind harp thing.
This little thing is just a, a sort of automated filter for bringing this, introducing this sound. Okay, so that's basically how it went down. Um, I mean, there's other stuff in there, which all. Well, there's not really, and that's basically it. It's just feeling your way around it and throwing stuff into. Um, yeah, and that's 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 Kiara. That's how that came about, and, uh, and there it is. Thanks for watching.